How's it everybody? Welcome back to the giant world of tiny things and another macro video. Finally summer has arrived in Germany. It's a nice sunny day out as you can see in the window behind me and so it's the perfect time to go for another macro walk and that's what we're gonna do right now. Let's go! And it didn't even take too long until I found our first little hotspot of subjects. This little green area just on the corner of the road was filled with life and potential subjects and the first subject that caught my eye was this tiny European weevil. Unfortunately it wasn't very fond of being photographed and so it escaped my sight before I got to snap a nice image of it. However, once I spotted this one specimen, I knew there had to be a few more on these plants and with a bit of patience and keen observing, I found a few more specimen, a couple of which I got to photograph in this image. And once again, this image goes to demonstrate that most insects are the most willing to cooperate with us macro photographers and model for our lenses when they are either feeding or in the middle of their mating ritual, the latter of which I got to photograph here. This image also shows off why I enjoy this lens so much because it just allows me to add such an abundance of context and background to the image which tells a nice narrative or allows me to tell a nice narrative even though this backdrop might not be the most idyllic or scenic it still makes for interesting color contrast and it still allows you to see a bit of the surrounding of where the image was taken and with the right landscape in the background that can make for really stunning effects. However, let's move on to our next subject and the next subject that I found is a little ladybird that was just sitting in the middle of a leaf, perfectly symmetrical and at this point I had a hard decision to make. Would I film it first or would I take an image first? Either way, I would probably miss out on the second option and because I really wanted a video sequence of this little ladybird for this video, I decided to film it first. But fortunately, the world of macro photography isn't limited to fast moving subjects such as weevils or ladybirds, they are much more slow paced subjects such as snails for example and so that's my next subject. And while I was on it, I spotted one red berry in a tree that was filled with green and not yet ripe berries and that was just such an outstanding little spot of color that I wanted to photograph it. I know it's not the most fascinating or the most special subject you could ever shoot, but I still like the resulting image. After we took all these images just in this one location, I'm really excited to move on and find new locations and new subjects and after all I invited you on a macro walk and not on a macro stand. I think we just found our next subject. Last night it was very stormy and a lot of chestnut flowers fell down from the treetops above me and so I just picked one up and while I was looking at it I realized that a little ant was on it and since I was hand holding it it didn't really have a way to get off and I took advantage of this situation by just taking a few images of that ant before I released it back into the wild and you can see the resulting images here. As you can also see it was quite a curious little insect as it tried to get onto my camera lens and even managed to do so. Unfortunately it can't focus that close but I think it would have made a really cool shot if I would have managed to get it in focus. And just a few meters down the road I found our next subject. A beautiful little white flower and even though you probably already have seen a million flower photos on certain Facebook macro groups and Instagram and wherever I didn't hesitate to add the million and first image to that collection because it's always fun to photograph flowers and they are such nice and interesting subjects. And because flower images are so abundant out there I tried to just make it a little bit more unique by taking the flash off camera off to the left of the camera lens and you can see what a huge difference that can make to the composition and the mood of your image. You can really put an emphasis on your subject and you can take full control of the lighting and the creative process that way. And this is the resulting image.
And just on the other side of the road, I found another flower, this time on a blossoming tree. And that is sort of the ideal scenario for a fisheye wide angle macro lens, because the flowers are kind of hanging down towards you. And so you get to photograph and focus on a single one of those flower buds. But in the background, you're going to see the treetop and a bunch more of the flowers that'll be out of focus and yet adding to the composition and the mood of your image. What a gorgeous day for a macro walk, eh? We found a lot of inspiring subjects so far and I really enjoy them. If you're enjoying this walk with me as well, please leave me a thumbs up as that really supports my channel. And it really means a lot to me because it shows me that you enjoy the content. And that is the biggest motivation you could give me to produce videos like this. Thank you. And next up, just in case you haven't guessed it yet, we're going to photograph more flowers. Well, at least I'm going to mix it up a little bit this time by opening up my aperture completely all the way to f2.8 to take advantage of the nice bokeh that this lens provides. And in the background we have a bit of sunlight shining through the leaves in behind the plant and that's just making for a really nice spotted and interesting background. Now the lens is not necessarily very sharp at f2.8, but in my defense this is a DIY fisheye lens and I think it really holds up nicely in terms of image quality, especially when you stop it down a little bit. But you know, sometimes you just want a nice bokeh, you want a thin depth of field and you want things to be a little bit more interesting and abstract. And so I think it's fine if it isn't perfectly sharp all the time. And after all this walking and talking and photographing, I got quite thirsty and so you can imagine how glad I was to have found this fountain of fresh water. And while I was drinking from it and looking up at the tap, I realized that this would be a really cool subject, especially for a fisheye lens. So I extended my shutter speed a little bit and I put the flashback on camera and then I got to take these images where you can tell that the water is out of focus and in motion. But because I added the flash, there is a bit of definition in form of specular highlights and crisp image detail in this photograph as well. And I really do like that effect. And unfortunately, while I was photographing the fountain, I realized that my batteries got a little weak. So for my next subject, which were some wild roses, I decided to spare the bit of power that was left in my batteries and just photograph with ambient light. So once again, I used the slow shutter speed and I rested my camera lens on the hand that was also holding on to the subject and I used the high speed continuous shooting mode of my camera to make sure that I got a couple sharp shots in that burst of images that I was recording. And you can see the result here, the technique works really quite well and it works not only for macro photography, it also works for wildlife photography with longer lenses when you don't really want to increase your ISO and you still want to get away with slower shutter speeds just try to hold your camera as steady as you can hold it and use the high speed continuous shooting mode of your camera and keep shooting for as long as your camera's buffer allows you to and you're almost guaranteed a sharp shot somewhere in that sequence. Turns out it was a really smart decision to save the last bit of energy in my flash batteries because the next subject that we're going to photograph are going to be some bees and to get them sharp and in focus and freeze motion we're going to need a speed light. And once again we're using the diffuser but we're also using the speed light off camera. First of all not to intimidate the bees more than we need to and second of all because the light just looks a little bit more interesting and a little bit more moody that way and that's how I wanted these images to turn out.
All right, I really hope you enjoyed today's images as much as I did. Once again, if you enjoyed the content, if you feel inspired by this video, please leave me a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing to my channel for more videos like this. I'm looking forward to seeing you soon. Until then, stay creative, keep shooting and have a good one. Cheers. Thank you.